I guess one thing to point out with that, another big advantage would be the fact that a lot of um, solid flooring installations nowadays are going to, or not even solid, I guess engineered as well, are going to glue assist where people mm -hmm. are nailing the floor, but they want to put an S curve or they want to trowel out a line of glue so that that floor doesn't have squeaks or pops or anything like that on down the road. So this is a good system to use in conjunction with like your sausages or your um r is it 851 or two 851 851 um the travelable adhesive to be able to do yeah. it with glue assist floor and also nail as well and absolutely maintain your uh vapor retarder underneath. Mm -hmm. and and you know we we talk about this a lot me brian like all the the bona guys that you that you guys all out there know and it's, we really think that this is going to take the place of, you know, 15 pound roofing felt or the red rosins and stuff like that. Not that those are bad products by any means. Mm -hmm. This is just going to give you a more complete moisture, moisture barrier. And yeah. now with, because boards, boards aren't getting, you know, they're not getting skinnier, they're getting wider. And yeah. the wider the plank we go, the more need for a glue assist there is. Yep. Um, so, and with, with a glue assist, you can't use those papers. I mean, it right. would be very pointless if you did, <laughs> don't waste the glue, but it's, uh, so with those systems, this marriage is perfect. Now you can get your full moisture barrier. You can sell the job as a moisture barrier system, but you've got the holding power of the glue assist, whether you do it as a, as a full trowel with a nail down, or you do the, you know, the sausages, S curves or the straight line, whatever you're going to do. So gotcha. that's a big deal. And especially the way that the industry is going, um, you know, like I said at the beginning, the mo you know, moisture barriers are very important, but also with callbacks with, with the nail glue assist, guys don't have, they don't have the employees or the time to go back and do, and to do repairs and to, to, you know, to fix squeaks and pops and, and movement like that. So the nail glue yeah. assist has become such a huge, huge part of this business. Yeah. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what R540 is and uh, give guys kind of a, a general breakdown real quick. Absolutely. You know, it's the 540 is important these days because moisture mitigation has become such a hot, hot topic, you know, with the lack of, the lack of employees, the, and the, you know, everybody wanting to cover their, cover their butts when they're out there installing floors. So the R540, it's a single component roll on moisture barrier. Um, we were really excited about it because it goes, goes great over concrete substrates, goes over wood substrates. It's a primer for Advantech or any of those type of woods. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the, one of the big benefits of it is zero waste. You know, that's a, it's a, that's a huge thing, especially moisture barriers aren't cheap. So when you can have a zero waste product that is a roll on that you don't have to be on your hands and knees, it's, you know, that's a real big plus. Yeah. Yeah. So this is uh, it's just a single component. It's like a liquid pour out of the bottle, roll on to your subfloor. So we're talking about wood subfloors. We're talking about um, OSB type subfloors. And then we're also talking about concrete subfloors, right? Absolutely. And, and, and a primer further for like the, the treated subfloors, like the Advantex and things like that. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So let's talk a little bit about, um, cause you started with moisture mitigation. So let's talk mm -hmm. a little bit about moisture mitigation. Um, you know, these kinds of products, I really like, uh, the roll on products because, um, when you roll it on, you can see that you've got a hundred percent coverage of, you know, whatever it is you're trying to go over. Um, and it also has a lot of advantages in terms of cutting down dirt and dust and just making a clean install. So um, as far as moisture mitigation goes, what is this product going to do on, uh, I guess, both your wooden subfloors and also your concrete subfloors? Um, you know, how much water is it going to, or moisture is it going to mitigate? Um, in either one of those environments. Absolutely. So one of the things about Bona is, and, and we've always kind of been this way, is we, we're not, we haven't, we always put a number behind something. If we're going to cover you, we want to have a number behind it. So mm -hmm. for us, what our scientists have found, what we, what we believe that the top level of moisture that a concrete slab can have is either 18 pounds on a calcium chloride test or 95% on a relative humidity test. Okay. Anything above that, you're really close to a saturated slab and you could have, and you could potentially have a lot of problems. 
Sure. Um, so with this, with one of the great things about the R540 is, is if you use that in conjunction with our 851, our standard everyday adhesive, that'll get you to 18 pounds and 95% RH. That'll cover you up to that level. Now, the bonus on that is, is that we do that with just one coat. So it's a yep. one coat, one coat of the 540 and then the 851 with our standard trial over the top. And you're going to be covered up to 18 pounds and 95% RH. Okay. Now, when we go to the wood substrates like a plywood or an OSB or something like that, we're going to cover you up to 20% moisture content in that, in those substrates. And if you know 20%, that's a ton of moisture. That's a real sure. wet plywood or OSB. Yeah. yeah. You know, we, we like to tell the story a lot about the, with the 540 is when, you know, if you master scrap delivers your wood two weeks in advance, right? We get full acclimation. Everything's looking great. It's your day to install. You've got painters coming after you or electricians or whatever, and you need to get that floor in. You go in, you put your pin in the, in the wood. It's it. I mean, you and I are in Denver, so five, yeah. six, six percent, maybe seven. That looks great, but then you stick it in your OSB, or your plywood, and it's at 14, 13%. Now, yeah. we, have, we have a dry climate, and so ours, ours will dry out a little faster, but if you wait for it to dry, you're at two weeks, three weeks, which is what you're supposed to do. Now, I know yeah. plenty of guys, you'll cross your fingers and install it and put some paper down and hope for the best. Chances are, with that big of a variance, it's gonna, you're going to have some cupping issues or some, some water problems. So, sure. This, you know, the 540, one coat of that pretty much negates any need for those, that wood floor to be within the two or 4% of the substrate, because yeah. now you're protecting it up to 20%. So as long as your, as long as your wood substrate's under 20%, you're covered. Gotcha. Okay. Well, so that kind of gets at my next question. So just to review real quick and make sure I get this right. So on a slab, you're looking at 18 pounds or 95% RH. Those are mm -hmm. your, your upper limits. And then on like a, on any sort of wood subfloor, um, you're looking at 20% uh, moisture yes, content in that subfloor. So that's the upper limit there. Uh -huh. uh, so my, my question was going to be, what kind of moisture testing do you guys recommend uh, contractors do? So I would assume you've got calcium chloride and then you've also got the RH probes on concrete. Yep. And then uh, how about on sub or wood subfloor? On your wood subfloor, it's, your, it's just your standard pin meter where you're going to, you know, you, you want to check it. You know, I get the question a lot. How many, how many times should I check it? I said, mm -hmm. check it as much as necessary, especially with those pin meters. You could check it you know, a lot and, and get as many different readings as you can to make sure you know where hot spots are or where you, where some moisture might, might be, you know, coming in through a doorway or near a drain or something like that. So, you know, when, when we talk about our adhesives and everything, we only go to calcium chloride and relative humidity on concrete just because, and, and only because that's what's stated by the NWFA. And we try to right. follow their guidelines as far as possible since they are the governing body on that. Sure. Um, on the wood substrates, I, yeah, I say check it as much as you can. Check as many different spots as you can with any kind of a pin meter that you can actually get down inside and, and see what's going on in the middle of that wood. Okay. Gotcha. Um, so I guess the next step is let's talk about prep. How's it mm -hmm. going to prep in both a concrete subfloor environment and then a wood subfloor environment? Do they need to, for instance, in concrete, are they going to fill cracks? Um, are they uh, going to pack holes? You know, what do they do on concrete? So, so what, what we want is, Bona, we, we want you to take care of the moisture at the lowest possible level. So if you are going to do a patch or a self-leveler or, you know, any kind of a concrete prep like that, we would like you to put the R540 down first. Okay. And, and then use your self level, your patch or your filler, whatever you, you're gonna use with the primer on top of that. So now, if you do have any moisture that occurs in that, in that substrate, it, it's, it's gonna be blocked. And that lightweight concrete that's a patch or a self leveler or a crack filler, you know, those are, those are a little bit lighter weight concretes that aren't as solid as a, as a slab, obviously. So if you've got that moisture blocked already, now you, you, can, you can keep the integrity of those patches and whatever you're putting on top of it. Now, okay. we do want you to broadcast some sand in there to make sure that that patch does have a, you know, just like some playground sand. You can broadcast it in the 540 when it's wet uh -huh. just to make sure that, that 
that whatever that lightweight concrete has something to grab onto. Sure. Um, yeah. Something a little bit a little bit stronger, but uh, to make more of a mechanical bond. But yeah, and, and like and I said, just, just real quick for guys who aren't as experienced with slabs, um, I assume what that looks like is you're rolling the product on, and then while it's mm -hmm. wet, you're taking up a, a good amount of sand not a little bit of sand you're taking a good amount of sand and you're throwing that out into the floor so that it actually dries in the product and when you when you have a dry product you've actually got a rough product that the patch can grab onto absolutely absolutely i'm sorry yeah you want to you want to flood it because whatever doesn't hold you can sweep back up and put it in bucket and use it for your next job yeah. but you want to put as much sand out there as possible because you want the yeah. the 540 to grab as much as it can just yeah. it just makes for a better installation and a, and a better and a stronger hold yeah and so then when a guy's rolling that onto the slab um i guess you know you've got your typical roller what do you guys recommend is it a quarter inch nap roller we we like we we recommend a quarter inch or three sixteenths inch nap. Um, the mohair works really well. The old oil paint roller mohair ones, um, if you can yeah. find them. But you know, I, I tell everybody, go as cheap as possible because it's a one and done. Like once you use that roller, it's not. There's nothing else that can happen. I mean, you can't use it anymore. So, if you've got if you've got a roller that is, you know, you don't want to use like a finish roller or something expensive like that because. It's just, you're going to throw it away and it's just going to be too expensive. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, so you've got, you've got a roller, you've got, you know, quarter inch, quarter inch nap is kind of where mm -hmm. you're at. You're yeah. not recommending, not recommending a super expensive roller for that. So no. if you've got a slab that does need some patching and prep so that you're not pooling the 540 in those areas, do you recommend mm -hmm. using a brush or do you have any tips for that? Um, no, I mean, it's a thick product, so it's, it's pretty sticky, so it can, you can move it in and out pretty well. Um, I don't, it, it's, you do want to be careful on the pooling because if it does pool, it will get, it could create bubbles and anywhere that a bubble pops, essentially you, your, your moisture barrier is compromised. So right. Right. you, I, it's one of those things where you just kind of want to work it out and pull it and, and, you know, pull it further out of the, those holes and those bird baths. Gotcha. Okay. So that's, um, that's a little bit on the, the concrete application. Let's talk mm -hmm. about a wood subfloor. How's a guy going to um, prep a wood subfloor? Does he need to um, sand off any overspray? Does he need to fill any um, gaps between sheeting? Like what, what do you recommend mm -hmm. on all that? So we, we always want you to sand off overspray only because depending on how thick it is, it, it kind of, it can affect the bond of the, of the 540. Now it's not, it's not one of those things where you got to spend all day really grinding it out, but we want you to take off as much as you can. Um, yeah. I, I'm sure as everybody on here seen, you've seen is because sometimes the construction companies are getting, they're getting a little lazier trying to make their OSB stretch and they're putting big, you know, expansion gaps in there you're not going to be affected. The moisture protection is not going to be affected by those gaps, but you're just going to lose square footage and you're going to lose money. So one thing that we, that I suggest all the time is, is maybe use the, the A50T, our sausage adhesive and fill those cracks because even if that board expands or contracts a little bit, it's just going to push it together. And, and that's still going to be a rubber type surface. Gotcha. And then you can go, you can go right over the top of that with a 540 and make sure and save your square footage and save some money. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so any, you know, I guess it's not, doesn't affect the product, uh, if you have any gaps or between any of the sheets, but in terms of, uh, the spreadability of it, the square footage you're going to get out of it, you might go through with a sausage and just fill all those up. Absolutely. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't affect it. It might, it's going to make it look a little bit different, um, because of the airflow that goes through those cracks, it'll come out a little when, when we pour it out, it looks kind of an amber color, um, yep. but, but with that airflow going through, it'll, it'll make it look a little white just where those cracks are. And that's just because of the air movement underneath it and, and going through it, but it doesn't gotcha. affect the moisture barrier properties or anything like that. Okay. And then in terms of roll on, are you still going with kind of a cheap quarter inch nap thereabouts? Roll same exact on? roller. Yeah. Same exact roller for either one. Okay. And then when you're rolling it on, are you looking to put a medium coat, thin coat, like what, what's the size of the container and the square footage you want to get out of it? So, so ours is, a, it's a five liter container. Um, we, so, and you're going to get 
depending on 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 wood substrates, you're going to get about 600 square foot square feet per jug. On uh, on concrete, you're going to get about 400 square feet. Yeah. And when I when I talk to guys about it, I say, plan it out like you're doing finish. You know, if you've got a thousand square foot room and you're doing traffic and you're trying to get 500, you know, half of it gets this jug, half of it gets the next one. Mm -hmm. So we want you to really stay, try and hit those uh, spread rates as, as good as possible. Um, it does, it does come out in a, in a thin film. Uh, it won't be, it won't look heavy at all. Um, just best practices. We always recommend doing cross, you know, doing cross grain, go one way and then come back over yep. the other way. So you don't miss any, any yep. spots, but yeah, 400 to 600 square feet. And we just want you to, to plan it out and hit those spread rates. Okay. Gotcha. Um, and then, and then in terms of rolling it, I assume it's like other products in this category where if you roll it too fast and you fling it or you get it on stuff. I mean, I bet it, it sticks pretty hard. So you gotta be real careful what you're flinging it against. It's, it's very much meant to go on substrates. Um, it's, it's not fun to clean off of anything. So, uh, I know, I know some guys who will just put a little bit of blue tape on the, along the baseboards just to make sure, um, the way I like to do it is if I've got a, I just do the open end of the cage right up against the wall. So I'm yep. making sure that I'm not, that I'm not getting it into the walls and, and go all the way around the perimeters because I don't want you. It is not fun to get off. Yeah, and, it, and I mean it's none of them are, and it's because they're meant to seal and they're meant to be be really strong and hold up well. Right, right. Okay, and so uh, I know you're going to have different drying times depending on conditions. So with this product, it actually is going to dry faster if it's a higher relative humidity and a higher temperature. Yes, sir. Uh, so that Denver is going to be a little disadvantage there, whereas usually with yeah. fast dryers. Um, right. So. What uh, what is a general dry time on concrete? What's a general dry time on on wood? We say you know we say about an hour and a half, an hour, and that's and that's a lot of the Denver time. Um, mm -hmm. It just uh, give it an hour and a half. It's not you know it's not a ton of time, but you know I get can I put fans on it and this and that. You know we hear I hear those questions all the time and. You probably could. I wouldn't put it directly on it so you don't get it, any movement on it. But if you wanted to get some air circulation, it's not going to hurt because you're putting down such a film, uh, like such a thin layer. It's not like an adhesive where it's going to dry from the top and then you might have some some still wet material underneath. So yeah. an, an hour and a half is a good is a good barometer down to somewhere in Houston or Louisiana where it's really, really humid. Florida, it's probably closer to an hour. But yep. an hour and a half is what is kind of where we like to to keep it. Okay, and that's on concrete or wood. Either either one, yeah. Okay, and then once that's dry, can you just glue or nail right over the top of it? So you, so if you're doing if you're if you are using glue, we want you to wait overnight, and we want you to, we want to make sure it dries completely. Now that you know sometimes that can be a long time, but when I talk to people, a lot of times. You know, it's one of those things where you got to clean the floor, you got to get it, you know, got to get it all prepped, you roll down and by that, you know, move furniture, everything. So you kind of want to stagger it so you can do, you can do your coat in the afternoon and then the next morning you come in and you start gluing. Okay. One of the positives on that is, is that it's, it is only a one coat system. So once you do that one coat, you're ready to glue, you know, the next morning. Okay. Good deal. For nail down, nail down, it's just an hour and a half. You're, once it's dry, you're ready to go. Just dry to the touch and you're ready to go. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, and then uh, I guess one thing to point out with that, another big advantage would be the fact that a lot of um, solid flooring installations nowadays are going to, or not even a solid, I guess engineered as well, are going to glue assist where people mm -hmm. are nailing the floor, but they want to put an S curve or they want to trowel out a line of glue so that that floor doesn't have squeaks or pops or anything like that on down the road. So this is a good system to use in conjunction with like your sausages or your um, R, is it 851 or two? 851. 851, um, the travelable adhesive to be able to do yeah. a glue assist floor and also nail as well. And Absolutely. maintain your uh, vapor retarder underneath. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, we, we talk about this a lot. Me, 
Brian, like all the, the Bona guys that you, that you guys all out there know. And it's, we really think that this is going to take the place of, you know, 15 pound roofing felt or the red rosins and stuff like that. Not that those are bad products by any means. Mm -hmm. This is just going to give you a more complete moisture, moisture barrier. And now with, because boards, boards aren't getting, you know, they're not getting skinnier, they're getting wider. And the wider the plank we go, the more need for a glue assist there is. Yeah. Um, so, and with, with a glue assist, you can't use those papers. I mean, it right. would be very pointless if you did, <laughs> don't waste the glue, but it's, uh, so with those systems, this marriage is perfect. Now you can get your full moisture barrier. You can sell the job as a moisture barrier system, but you've got the holding power of the glue assist, whether you do it as a, as a full trial with a nail down or you do the, you know, the sausages, S curves or the straight line, whatever you're going to do. So gotcha. that's a big deal. And especially the way that the industry is going, um, you know, like I said at the beginning, the mo you know, moisture barriers are very important, but also with callbacks with, with the nail glue assist, guys don't have, they don't have the employees or the time to go back and do, and to do repairs and to, to, you know, to fix squeaks and pops and, and movement like that. So the nail yeah. glue assist has become such a huge, huge part of this business. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, is there a window of time you have to uh, get to it if you're doing a glue down? Like, uh, is there a maximum window between that overnight dry time and when you would have to go back and reprep it? Yeah, so we say 48 hours, um, but that comes with a caveat. If this, if the floor, if you rolled down the 540 and it was in a sealed scientific room, you could come back 75 years later and glue to it. Mm -hmm. Our biggest concern is other job site contaminants, drywall dust, paint, overspray, things like that that could get on there mm -hmm. and, get, and be in between the, the adhesive and the, five, four, and the 540 and, and, you know, maybe, maybe mess with their, uh, you know, their bond. Yeah. But uh, but honestly, you know, if it's a if it's a really clean house and everything, and you're the only person in there, there's not a lot of dust, or you cover it with plastic, that that number is is negligible. But we say 48 hours just to make sure that we're that you're gluing to a clean surface. Gotcha. So it doesn't have anything to do with uh, a change in the product. It's just a change in the environment. Absolutely, it doesn't break down or anything like that. It's just it just we just want to make sure that it's clean. And you know, with that. It's yeah. I mean, you want to always keep a clean, a clean area, but as long as it's, yeah, as long as it stays really nice and clean, you're going to, you're going to have success. Okay. Good deal. Um, the question I always like to ask with any of these products is if a guy was going to screw this up, um, which we'll all find ways to do that <laughs> some, somehow, right. what are the easiest pitfalls somebody could avoid with this product? Um, well, one of them is is not cleaning off the top if you're going to only use half of a jug because it'll be sealed on. you got to cut it off with a, a knife after that, but that's an easy one to fix. The main one would just be putting it on too thick because, like I said before, if you put it on too thick, it can have a tendency to bubble a little bit, and mm -hmm. you'll see it. You, you'll see it start to turn white and start to bubble before it's even dry. So it's easily fixable because you can just pull it back out and, and spread it spread it throughout the floor. But if you do if you do lay it on too thick and the bubble and it does bubble and those bubbles break, like I said, that'll that can compromise your your moisture barrier because, as we know, mo moisture is going to find a way. So water yes. water always finds a way. Um, and then and then also kind of like what you said, don't let somebody walk through it and then walk on your pre finished floor in the next room because it's it's not a lot of fun to get off. Sure, sure. If you need to, you can call me. I got a couple of tricks, but it's not it's not amazing including buy a new floor. Yeah, that's that's the best one. Um, okay. So roll it on don't roll it on too thick. Uh don't get it on anything that you don't want to have it permanently on. Uh, yeah, where where wear your wear your bad jeans for that day. Yeah, there you go. Um awesome. Okay. So I mean you you oh well one question I would have with that actually real quick. Mm -hmm. Let's say somebody did have it bubble overnight mm -hmm. and it all set up how do you repair that so it's going to be the same thing and, and going back to um if you if you left it let's say something happened on the job and you couldn't get back for a week and it gets dirty all we'd want you to do is really vacuum and then just put another coat over the top okay. now if you're going over osb or over a wood substrate 
we would want you to abrade it, open it back up, and then come over with another coat. Reason behind that is we don't want ever to be too, we don't ever want there to be two coats on an OSB or a wooden substrate. With two okay. coats, it really seals it up. And if it seals that floor up, as you know, moisture is not going to jump. It's not going to jump from one piece of plywood to the next. Yeah. So if, if you seal that completely, it doesn't allow any of the moisture to, to, to go off. Um, the 540 does have a perm rating. So, it, so it's letting moisture out. It's, it's releasing moisture at a slow enough rate that it's not going to affect your flooring, but it is going to move it out of that wood substrate. Yeah. Now, yeah. that's that's why we want to be really careful about putting two coats on there, because if you seal it in, then you can rot the, that wood from the inside because the moisture's got nowhere to go. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. And one thing I was going to mention at the beginning, too, just um, just to be real clear with the contractors that are watching, if you do test your plywood and you're getting 15, 16 percent, um, something like that, if you test your concrete and you're getting... 85% RH or um, 14 pounds of moisture or something like that. Uh, a product like 540 is going to block the moisture, but that doesn't necessarily eliminate all the problems. Like that, that probably is something you need to address with whoever um, either owns the house or is in charge of the job site because moisture problems are going to just be transferred away from the subfloor into other areas of the house. Yeah, just because just you're pushing it off of the wood floor doesn't mean that it's going to be great underneath the carpet in the room next next door. Right. It's, you know, any time that you, those numbers that you talked about, any time you're in those 90% or, you know, 16 pounds, yes, we have products that can help you take care of that. But that's a way scarier situation that what's really going on at that house or at that business or wherever it is. Yeah. Is, the, is there a drainage problem that's going to be a problem forever? Yeah. And and, and, and if you're catching it, like if you're catching it in dry time, does that go up to 99% when yeah. it, when it does get wet or, you know, yeah. 18, over 18 pounds, 19 pounds when it, when it gets wet. So that is something, you know, I always get nervous about, about those high numbers. Um, you know, if, if somebody calls and says, I got it, I got 94% on an RA treating. Yes. Under the letter of the law, we're going to, we're going to be able to block it. But if that jumps up anymore, now you're really playing with fire. So it's, yeah. it's just smart to, to really investigate those situations and figure out what, what's going on and why my right. moisture level is so high. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and then too, the flip side of that is I may be fine now at 40%, but when the rain comes in the spring, that 40% is going to become 85. So you could have mm -hmm. the opposite situation where I may not necessarily need the product now, but I don't know what that floor looks like 365 days of the year. And so it's, it's cheap insurance for lack of a better term towards future problems. So a hundred percent. And I think that, I think that that's how contractors can sell it. I think you can sell it as a moisture mitigation system. That's going to last for however long the floor does. It's a, you know, it's a long-term benefit. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Was well, there anything else you want to um, highlight about R540? No, it's just, it, like I said, it's a great product. It's a single, co single coat on anything. We, you can use two coats if you are putting down an LVT or, a, you know, a, one of the waterproof systems or an LVP, whatever. If you, you know, if you have to put one of those down, it is, that is a nice insurance that you can do over concrete to, you know, for the homeowner. But for wood substrates, one coat along with our 851 is going to get you 18 pounds, 95% on a relative or on the concrete. And one coat's going to cover you up to 20% moisture content on the subfloor, on the wood subfloor. Awesome. Well, thanks, Trey. Thanks for joining us. And thanks for going through all that information. I'm sure a lot of guys are going to find that super helpful. Absolutely. And yeah, if anybody needs me, I'm easy to find. There you go. All right, guys. Appreciate you joining us and uh, appreciate your time today. We'll talk to you guys later. Thanks, Zach.